You might be taking a daily multivitamin thinking it's your nutritional safety net. But what if I told you science says otherwise? A massive 20 year study showed that multivitamins don't help us live longer. And a deep dive into the research shows that they don't improve our risk for heart disease, cancer, or most chronic illnesses either. So are multivitamins a waste of money or is there more to the story? Let's break down what the science really says because you deserve to know the truth about your health. Hit me, producer Potts. Dr. Sir, approximately one third of Americans take a daily multivitamin. I know I do. <laughs> But what does the science actually say about multivitamins and our health? Given that there's an established link between vitamin and mineral shortfalls, like not even just deficiencies, but even just insufficiencies and increased risk of chronic disease. And there's studies that have confirmed that adults who take a multivitamin do have lower rates of nutrient deficiencies. It would be a really reasonable assumption to make that taking a daily multivitamin would reduce your risk of health problems. Why there's so much marketing of multivitamins as nutritional insurance. The problem is that a huge collection of really the big high quality scientific studies have just failed to show a protective impact of a daily multivitamin. Basically, multivitamins are busted, with some caveat and nuance, which we'll get to. The fact is that if a daily multivitamin was substantially improving our health, we'd expect to see a signal in the most prevalent health conditions. So we'd expect to see a reduction in the incidence and mortality from cardiovascular disease and cancer, the, the two biggest killers. We'd also expect to see a decrease in what's called all-cause mortality, literally death from all causes, which is an indirect way to measure overall health and longevity that scientists use in epidemiological studies to determine whether or not something is good or bad for us overall. And then to really understand the benefits or lack thereof of multivitamins, we don't wanna just look at individual clinical trials. We want to look at systematic reviews and meta-analyses that pool together all of the data from many different clinical trials to have higher statistical power and show us where the preponderance of evidence lies so that we're not just accidentally looking at outliers and making incorrect deductions from that data. So what do meta-analyses tell us about how a daily multivitamin affects our risk of cardiovascular disease, cancer, and all-cause mortality. It, the news isn't good. At least it's not good for multivitamin companies. Let's start with a 2013 meta-analysis that analyzed data from 27 different studies that collectively included over 450,000 study participants. This meta-analysis showed that a daily multivitamin had absolutely no effect on all-cause mortality, nor mortality from cardiovascular disease. The study went on to show no benefit of a multivitamin to heart disease, stroke, or cancer, reinforcing the idea that getting our nutrients from foods is far superior for long-term health. Another 2013 systematic review that included data from 26 studies, over 300,000 study participants collectively, showed no benefit of a multivitamin in the prevention of cardiovascular disease or cancer. They also looked at whether combined supplementation had a benefit and it didn't. A 2018 meta-analysis that included data from 18 studies and collectively over 2 million study participants showed that multivitamin supplements had absolutely no effect on cardiovascular disease incidence or outcomes, including coronary heart disease and stroke. The analysis concluded that there was no significant effect of a daily multivitamin on the risk of major cardiovascular events, myocardial infarction, stroke, or mortality from cardiovascular disease. And there was a very recent, brand new, huge study published on this topic. A 2024 study that followed nearly 400,000 study participants for more than 20 
years. They looked at cardiovascular disease incidence, cancer rates, and all-cause mortality, and found no statistically significant difference between regular multivitamin users and non-users. But it does matter when we get these nutrients from food. A really important 2019 study actually did that comparison and looked at the impacts on our health when we get nutrients from food versus a multivitamin. And they found that specifically, getting enough vitamin A, vitamin K, magnesium, zinc, and copper from food reduced all-cause mortality and mortality from cardiovascular causes. But when you got the same amount of those same nutrients from supplements, no such benefit. They also showed that getting excess calcium, that was calcium over 1200 milligrams per day, from supplements but not from food, increased mortality from cancer. Most studies show that multivitamins are health neutral, but this one says we definitely don't want to overdo calcium. Too much supplemental calcium is also associated with an increased risk for calcium oxalic kidney stones. So yeah, if we're trying to answer the question of does a multivitamin provide me nutritional insurance? If my diet's falling a little bit short of these nutrients, does a multivitamin fill in the gap and improve my health in a meaningful way? These giant studies say no. Well, I guess I don't have to worry about my multivitamin anymore. Um, so now, now you've got me thinking. So multivitamins are so heavily marketed to us from mainstream media advertisements, from you know our friends, right? Everyone's talking about supplementation. It's really wild to realize they don't actually improve our health. Um, so this really has got me like wanting to know why don't they improve our health? Like, why don't we see these health outcomes with multivitamins since they are increasing our nutrients, right? Yep. So science doesn't give us a really definitive answer. It gives us lots of possible explanations. So we do know, for example, that the vitamins and minerals in a multivitamin, especially tablets, are not particularly well absorbed, which means most of the vitamins and minerals in that supplement are uh, just, just taking the, the long route through, but they're not actually hanging out. I mean, we're, we're, we're pooping them out. We're, we're not absorbing them. For example, studies where they create environments that are designed to model the human gut show that like tablets especially can take four to six hours to dissolve which is far, far too long because most of the absorption of those nutrients happens in the small intestine, especially higher up in the small intestine. So we'd actually need uh, tablets to dissolve within 20 to 30 minutes to efficiently absorb all of the nutrients contained within them. Another possible explanation, and actually probably it's a mix of all of these, is that there isn't enough vitamins and minerals in these multivitamin supplements to make up enough of the dietary shortfalls to really have a big difference on long-term health. For example, if you just look at the vitamin D content of a typical multivitamin, it's typically 400 to 1,000 IU. But if you actually have low vitamin D levels, which an estimated 75% of Americans do, your doctor is likely to recommend a vitamin D supplement that's more like two to 5,000 IU daily and retest your vitamin D levels ideally and potentially even go up from there. And analyses that have looked at what percentage of Americans are falling short of essential nutrients comparing diet sources alone versus diet plus fortification plus supplements show there's a number of nutrients for which the majority of Americans are still falling short of, even those who take a multivitamin. So for example, if you just look at diet, 97.8% of Americans don't get enough dietary potassium. If you include a multivitamin uh, in your math, 97.3% of Americans still don't get enough potassium. 70.2% of Americans don't get enough dietary vitamin K. If you include multivitamins in the math, it's still 66.1% of Americans not getting enough vitamin K. And a final possibility here is that there's really important nutrients for the health equation that just aren't formulated into your typical multivitamin. So for example, 90 to 95% of Americans don't get enough dietary fiber. There's generally no fiber or a menial teeny tiny amount of fiber in a multivitamin supplement. So we definitely need more studies to be performed to really understand why multivitamins don't yield the expected 
health benefit from boosting our nutrition, but we do have a large body of scientific evidence that shows that when we get those nutrients from foods, we do get that expected benefit. And that's why the Nutrivore philosophy is centered on the goal of getting all of the nutrients our bodies need from the foods we eat. And why my book, my website, all of my content that I create is centered on teaching you about nutrients, what they do in the body and how they impact your health, what types of foods have what types of nutrients and the eating patterns that make it really simple and straightforward to get that full range of nutrients our bodies need. So does that mean all nutritional supplements are just a waste of our money? I promised context and nuance, uh, here it is. Supplements still have a role to play in the overall health equation. For example, if your doctor has done testing and discovered that you're low in something, very often if you have a nutritional deficiency, it's really challenging to bring up levels in the body up to a normal range from food alone, depending on exactly which deficiency we're talking about. So in that case, if, you, if your doctor has recommended supplementation, especially high dose supplementation in response to a tested nutritional deficiency, that's a really important strategy. Depending on what nutrient it is, then once your levels are back up to normal, you can shift to a food-based approach. But going from deficient to sufficient with food alone doesn't always work. There are also many situations where supplements have an excellent track record. For example, prenatal vitamins, really good at reducing risk of neural tube defects like spina bifida, and can help protect against pregnancy complications as well. As another example, there's a good body of scientific evidence showing that supplemental vitamin B12 with or without other B vitamins can reduce the risk of age-related cognitive decline. And actually some researchers have postulated that our lower ability to absorb vitamin B12 as we age in conjunction with low dietary intake could be driving cognitive decline in the elderly, increasing dementia diagnoses and eroding quality of life. And it's worth noting that there are niche outcomes for which a daily multivitamin has shown benefit. For example, a 2024 meta-analysis showed that a daily multivitamin include memory and global cognition in older adults. That's potentially attributable to the B vitamins in that multivitamin. Although even this study showed there were no broader health advantages of a daily multivitamin, consistent with the studies we've already talked about. And again, I want to emphasize that with the exception of excess calcium, there's no health harm from a multivitamin either. So for example, if you're someone with ARFID, you're neurodivergent and you have a very small list of safe foods, in that situation, a multivitamin makes sense, even if we don't have scientific studies to prove that it's a health benefit. If that applies to you, I would also recommend working with a specialist. Cognitive behavioral therapy has been shown to be very, very helpful for ARFID. Wow, thank you so much for running us through all the amazing studies and science and information behind multivitamins. And it sounds like if you want to take one, go ahead. It's not going to hurt anything. But also if you're on a budget and you're looking at buying this expensive multivitamin that someone has suggested to you or, you know, buying more food, sounds like buying more food is the, the better option. A hundred percent. And if you want to know about which foods deserve a little extra love, I recommend grabbing a copy of my book, Nutrivore. The goal of Nutrivore, as I already mentioned, is to get all of the nutrients our bodies need from the foods we eat. But this is a dietary philosophy compatible with anti-diet, or it can be used as a diet modifier to apply an extra emphasis on nutrient-dense foods atop of whatever diet you prefer.